Okay, before we get started, we got some housekeeping to do. Need to do a little update to this channel. Because of how much things have changed in the last two or three months when it comes to wrestling, I got to state what's going to happen here. Now, I have talked about it before, what I'm going to be doing with my schedule, but let's, let's get this clear. Axe TV is going to be showing Impact on Tuesday nights, I believe from 8 to 10. That's going to happen. So, what's going to happen with the schedule now? Monday, no Raw. Unless someone asks me to do a Raw, unless it's like something special about a pay-per-view, and I really need to do a review, of, at least a brief review of Raw. Just my thoughts on it. That's what you're going to get. Tuesdays will be Impact Wrestling. That's not going to change. Impact is always going to be my main thought in this channel. Wednesdays is going to be AEW. Flat out, I will not be doing NXT. Now, if you guys want me to review NXT, because I have started watching it. I just have not reviewed it. This time, I managed to sit down and I watched what happened this past week. I did watch it. It was pretty good. Pretty damn good. I just didn't want to do a review of it because I'm still not in the swing of things. I, every time when I try to start it, always something gets in the way or I just lose interest. So I'm not going to say it until I really feel comfortable about it. But if you guys want me to give my thoughts on if NXT was good that week, just leave a comment on the AEW review and I'll probably just do a quick video, maybe five minutes, just to say what really got, them, got me either great or bad or whatever. And SmackDown. The Smack of Smackdown will continue. I know I skipped this one because there was just nothing there to look at that I cared about at all. But when Smackdown starts, October, what is it, October 4th, I will be doing a Smack of Smackdown of it. I will not be doing a direct review of it because I don't know how much of the show is going to change. There's just no point in it. Until I see real change, there will be no Smackdown reviews because it's not worth it. Just my thoughts on the show in a very loose format. That's what you're going to get. Now, what do we get in this show? Oh my gosh. Wedding shows are always a pain in the ass. Because either it's just super corny, super overdone, and super stupid. With maybe some really funny parts in it. This show really wasn't that great. Really, I'm being honest here. This wasn't a great show. Did it have some good wrestling? Yes. Did it have some good moments to try and progress storylines? Yes. Do I agree with them? No. But you can say that this show, even though it was extremely corny, did have stuff in it that you could enjoy to a certain extent. Let's go with the North. Um, look, I want to say this because I know a lot of people are thinking LAX is going to be here soon. Let it come soon. I can't stand seeing the North dealing with old guys. Look. If you rush LAX back so quickly, it's going to lose its potency. Let, let, let me explain it very quickly because I don't want to drag it out. If you wait at least four or five months to bring them back, it would be better. Because it will give some people time to get used to Santana and Ortiz are not there. You bring in other people, yes, they could be incredibly great wrestlers with great charisma and great ring work. But people are going to still think about Santana Ortiz for a little while. And you do not want to have Santana Ortiz in this situation when they're on AEW's television. You don't. So give it a couple of months, at least four months of time before you bring people in to replace Santana Ortiz. So people can get used to seeing a Willie Mack and a Rich Swan, seeing the North, seeing what could happen with RVD and Rhino and anyone else. We need time. If you bring back LAX quickly, what does this give us for the tag division? You want to have it just like the main roster of Raw and SmackDown? Think about it. Now, we had the North basically posing as LAX and pretty much saying we got rid of them, we are the best. And what is it? Alexander pretty much said, I cannot stand you people. Because we came out as LAX, you cheered us, and the minute that you saw who we were, you stopped cheering, we're better than them. We are the best. Cheer us, not these has-beens who couldn't even hold on to titles more than once. They had to lose it four times, roughly speaking. Conan came out, which I expected. But when I saw him talking, it felt kind of forced. And I was worried very worried that he was going to bring those guys out now. 
but I know he can't because it's too soon. So he brings out RVD and he brings out Rhino. And they have a okay match where Rhino, what, what was it? Rhino RVD won? Um, I think they did win. I don't remember. Um, uh, what is it? I didn't write it down. I think they did win. I believe RVD and Rhino did win. So that gives them a possibility going into title contention. The Depsy Hit Squad was at ringside with Muhammad Ali Shira. Now, I know I didn't talk about Muhammad Ali Shira last week. I just didn't want to talk about it with Cody De Deaner. I didn't. Because I wanted to see how they're going to book the guy. Because are they going to book him like a monster? Or are they going to book him like a monster that needs help? And when you see him with Cousin Jake, look, I know a lot of people didn't like Mom Lee Shearer because he was so green, so sloppy, he could not talk. I understand. He was green. We know this. But he looks like he's improved to a certain extent. And I like the ring work. But, I'm saying this as but, when you saw the match itself, and yes, you got Gamma telling his boys I could not stand what you two were doing. I don't care if you're my son. I don't care if I accepted you as my son. He's talking about Raju. You, you got to stop losing. I couldn't stand it. So I went back to India. And I went and got a monster to end this problem. In Mahamali Shira. But here's the problem. If Mahamali Shira is a monster. Why is Gama Singh's son and Raju helping him to win? If they didn't have him have help, he would look great. But because Raju, and I forgot the I forgot Gama's son's name, I always tend to forget. Helping him to win. It just brought it down for me. I'm I'm sorry. I'm I'm being sorry here. I'm I'm sorry guys. If anyone is liking Mahamli Shira and you don't want to hear him being bad mouthed. I understand it because I like Mahamli Shira, but I'm going to say it for what it is. Mahamli Shira is a joke because as a freaking monster for the Dempsey Hit Squad, he has to have two guys cover for him instead of him destroying a cousin Jake. Flat out, he should have just annihilated him. He should have. That should have happened. It didn't happen. There you go. Okay. We got Shamrock. Guy is still freaking jacked. Look at this picture of this man. Look at those freaking abs. The guy is well older than me. I know he's in his 50s. I don't know how old. I think he's 56. 50 or 56. I don't know how old. But he's older than me. The guy is jacked. And he's pretty much talking. Talking about how special it was to be back in Impact. How it was good that he was dealing with a Brian Cage. Joking with him. And then Moose got involved. And now he can't stand that piece of garbage. And he thinks he's so hot, he's shit. He actually tried to say shit and he blocked. He basically bleeped it out. You know what this reminded me of? This reminded me of Moose. No, no, it wasn't Moose. Who was it? This was very similar to what they did. Um, Who was it? W was it? Um, I can't remember. Who was the one that did this angle? It was Bobby Lashley. Yes. It was Bobby Lashley. And I can't remember who he's facing in the ring at the time. Who did this angle where Bobby Lashley was dealing with someone. He was still in the MMA. Um, no, it was Bobby Lashley and it was Matthew somebody. I, I don't keep up with MMA guys. I'm sorry. I just keep forgetting. But that was the type of angle we just got. It's a repeat of that with Bobby Lashley dealing with another MMA guy. And I'm not saying it was bad or good. It's just what we've seen before. But it is trying to drum up some good publicity. And I'll give it for that. At least it's not something everyone is totally bored of. But it is something people have seen before in the last four years or so. Five. We got Taya Valkyrie with Rosemary. And Taya is begging Rosemary for help to deal with Tennille Dashwood. And I will get to Tennille Dashwood and Madison Rain in a minute. But she's asking for help, saying pretty much, hey, we're friends, and if you do this, I'll give you a shot at my title. Rosemary ain't having anything of it. She don't want nothing of it. She said, deal with it yourself. Become the monster warrior that I respected and I enjoyed being in the ring of. And then she decided to give her clothes for the wedding. 
Where are they going with this? Where? It's so stupid. I'm, I'm sorry, it just is. I just don't see anything good with this, honestly. It's worse than when... It's worse than when she was with Allie. Because with Allie, she was acting cutesy. Here it seems so obnoxious, and that's why it's better. Because it's obnoxious. It's getting on my nerves. And seeing that Tyler Valkyrie is so obnoxious, being nice but obnoxious, I hate it, but that means she's doing her character well. I don't like the angle, but it's understandable, and at least she's staying in character, and so is Rosemary, and leave it at that. We have the Tennille Dashwood versus Madison Rain. Now, was this a good match? It was okay. There's no way you can say that Tennille Dashwood isn't a good wrestler. She is. She has good character with good wrestling ability in the ring. Then you got to pair her up with a Madison Rain, where you could say a lot about Madison and her character. She can have a generically okay to boring face. Or an okay to a good sometimes heel. But you can't say 100% that her ring work is 100% trash. She's not. She actually can wrestle pretty well. She's Average to above average. She's not a great wrestler. She's an above average wrestler that has her moments. And in this match, it was okay. Was it dragged out? Yeah, it was. It was a dragged out match. I think it could have been shorter. Tennille needed to have a win. And I felt they dragged it out. I admit, it was funny to see that Madison Rain said to some woman, Shut up, old lady. And everyone just started going with it saying, Old lady, old lady. It was a bit funny. In the end, Tennille won. And now she has a chance against a Tile of Valkyrie. I'm alright with that. Um, let me see here. Oh, there's a lot of the wedding. I'm trying to get through the, the good stuff before getting into the wedding. Um, now I better get to this one. You have simply the Dave Chris versus, you guessed it, Tessa Blanchard. What did I say? That eventually Tessa was going to go for the X Division. Here's the thing. Was it a good match? Yes. It was a good match. Seeing that, and, they, and this is the most important thing. They did not hold back on Tessa. You can say a lot about seeing women in these positions. And her build has sucked. She should have had a faction from the very beginning. It could have been the ECW Originals. I don't care. She needed a faction. She got a faction for a short amount of time. And now she's on her own again, which I do not agree with. She should have had at least RVD or Rhino out there with her to make it feel more like she had a faction behind her so she feels more believable. In this situation, you had her... Go up against Dave Chris. Mad Dog Fulton was at ringside with Jake. Mad Dog grabbed her around the face, was beginning to smother her, and the ref ejected him. So it was just Jake and Dave. And in the end, it was a good match. She took a lot of abuse, which she needed to. And if anyone says it's wrong that women get abused like that, look, she wants to be with the men wrestling. She wants to to get the same treatment, so she's going to get her ass beat up. And that means if she's going to get a boot to the titty, I'm sorry for my language, if she's going to get boot to the boob, she's going to get it. If she's going to get a foot, a, a foot in her crotch, it's going to go there. It has to go here. Go there, not here. Go there. Because when it, when it comes down to it, to make it as believable as possible that this woman, who's not even a third the size of most of the guys there, even in the X Division, she has to struggle to make it look good. And she won the match. But in the end, after it was done, Mad Dog comes back, grabs her. Look at my face. He hiked her up at least eight, seven to eight feet in the air and slammed her ass onto the, the ring. Perfect. Perfect. That's what needed to be done. She was not supposed to get back up from that. She was supposed to just lay there like a stump and anybody could smack the living hell out of her face because she couldn't move. She had to get destroyed. Not because she's a woman, but because she's a face. That's what we needed. 
Now, I'm going to make this clear. Do I care about the storyline? No, because it wasn't structured properly. But as I've said for the last few weeks to a month, if you're going to go there, you better have a payout. Because if she did not win that match, and she does not win it bound for glory, all of this was just so stupid. And it's not because I want to see her become X Division champ. It's not about if I like her or not. It's not about if I want to marry her. It's not about if I want to get between her legs, which I wouldn't mind. I don't care. But the, <laughs> but the point is, if they're going to be spending April, May, June, July, August, September, October, eight months, if I'm counting correctly, if they started in April, I believe it started in April, even if it was May, in the seven months, we're talking about a seven month storyline. That has to have a payout, no matter if you guys like it or not. And now, if I'm forgetting anything, I'm sorry. It's just, I want to just get through the wedding. The wedding, it's, oh wait, one last thing. You had the Iceman, what is it, um, Dave, uh, the Iceman? He was damn funny. There was one comment of someone that said, hey, I don't like the sound of your voice. Well, guess what? Turn it down, you ass clown. I like him. <laughs> I don't care if no one likes him. That attitude, like, he's like a New Yorker. He's saying, you know what? You don't like me? Screw you. I don't care. I'm here. I'm being paid. Screw you. That is the attitude I kind of like. A guy that's willing to be humble, but if you don't like him, he's going to blast you. You don't care. So I did like Iceman on pretty much on the Twitch stream. Simple as that. He was there. He did his job. And if he boxed his words a little bit, it doesn't matter. It was still funny. The wedding. We had everybody there and their mother. You had Reno Scum slip something into Eddie Edwards' drink to make him like a grown nut, drunk out of his mind. Acts like someone from Boston. They tend to drink. <laughs> you got... Uh, I'm, I'm not going to go through all what was going on with the, the bridesmaids when it comes to the grooms. It's not necessary. Let's just get to the situation at hand when it came to the wedding itself. And it was supposedly... I don't know why they did that. Having a Brian Cage brother do proceed in the wedding. Why? <laughs> so many interruptions by the North, by by Taya Valkyrie. Basically, Eddie coming in, being drunk. Well, I'll, let me crank it back. Taya basically complained that she should be the center of attention and all the stuff that she wanted there wasn't there. The North saying they wanted some more freaking money. Oh, almost forgot. You got RVD with, I believe that's his real wife. I don't know. I think that's his real wife. And they let her adjust her boobs on television. I barely caught some of it. You see it in my face. That woman has got a damn good rack. If it's his wife or not. If that's his wife, you lucky bastard. If it isn't, you're still a lucky bastard, RVD. But pretty much everyone having to say... Eddie punching out the, uh, punching out Brian Cage's brother, if I believe correctly. I missed it. It I could not catch it. I tried to catch it. In the middle of catching the image, I missed it. And I didn't even get a full watch of it. And I had to delete it. Uh, it pissed me off. I missed it. It was just a blur. But in the end, it is Father Mitchell who does the wedding proceedings. Saying, do you want, and he's trying to coerce and Melissa Santos into coming to the dark side. Come to me, my baby. Come to me. I am your your sugar daddy. You don't need this muscle-bound meathead. And she said no. And in the end, they're married. They go to the ring. And who tried to get there earlier, which was a Sammy Callahan with OVE, comes to the ring. He, he says, hey, me and all of us were friends at one point. And we are not friends. We faded apart. But I'm not here to fight with you. I just want to say, hey, congratulations. But I want to make it clear that this is my time. You will be facing the draw. And you better get yourself back in shape before this match. Because I don't want to deal with a pussy. I want to deal with the machine. And by that moment, Brian didn't like him being called a bitch. He grabs a Sammy on the shoulder. Sammy's holding the bottle. And instead of cracking it on a Brian Cage's head, 
who's leaning into him, his wife gets it in the face, as you can see it in my face. She hits the ground. Sammy is shocked that he actually hit her because he thought he was going to hit a Brian Cage. And in the end, everyone is mad at Sammy. He interrupted the moment where they're supposed to be dancing, which, uh, corny. But in the end, this is what we got in this show. It was extremely corny. It was full of cleavage. Oh my gosh, there was so much cleavage. I loved it. You got enough cleavage that will make your, 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 your buddy hard. But taking away from that, I'm not trying to be nasty, but taking away from that, I'll say this about the show. Was it better than anything the WWE would put on? Yes. Look, you wouldn't see any woman adjust their breasts like the woman that was with RVD, and I do believe that was his wife. I think it was. Showing as much cleavage as they were, they were showing more cleavage than the WWE would. And I commend them for doing that because there's nothing wrong with using sexuality for a sex. Male or female. Guy can go around with a crotch, whatever. Woman can do the same thing. Whatever works. I'm fine with it as long as it's done to give something to the show. And in this case, it did. It wasn't a bad show. Was it corny? Yes. Was it predictable in some places? Yes. Will you like it 100%? No, but you can't say that it's, it isn't better than SmackDown or Raw. Flat out, you will probably enjoy at least some of this show. If you haven't seen it yet, take a look at it. Particularly the match... Um, well, I can't say that the match are all good. But at least if you want to really get a good idea of how good Tennille Dashwood is, at least you'll be able to see her with Madison Rain. It was a decently good match. Better than the other two. Because there was only three on this show. And oh, TJ Perkins now is getting followed by the talk. I enjoyed that. Have a good day. Have a good night. Peace.